Hi there! In today's lessons, we will take a tour into our libraries. We can consider the Beam Object Libraries as a warehouse where we store all the parametric objects we use in edifices. Our Beam Object Library is subdivided in Project, General, User, and Title blocks. In the Project Library, we store all the objects use it for the current project, and also all the objects created directly in this category. The general library contains objects downloaded with the software, and it can't be modified. Then we have the user category, that contains all the objects created from the user, and of course can be freely updated and modified. Each model present in this category will be available for all the future projects of the user. And then we have the title block folder, which of course contains all the titles block models. But now let's see some customizations. From this menu, we can access all the subcategories present in this library. Let's suppose we want to create a new hatch pattern. So I will right click on this folder, and inside this folder I will add a new element. To import a new model, I need to click on this button, and then select the file to be imported. So, for example, here, I need to import this path file. And here, you can see the preview of the pattern imported. On the right panel, we have the title. And then we have the description, which is also modifiable. Here, in the model box, we can see again the name section, which in this case, can have inside more than one name. And that's because in a path file, you can find more than one pattern. And so, from this list, we can choose the one we want to use. Then again we have a description, but this time related to each of the pattern. We have the line thickness, and for example, in this case, we want a 0.3mm thickness. Then we have the scale factor, that allows us to change the general dimension of the pattern. And for example, in this case, I want a 0.5 factor. And then we have the AFC and the attached box. So, let's confirm and move on to the next category. So let's open the material section, and again, as seen before, we can add a new folder, then right click to insert a new element. So we create a new material, which in this case is a default ceramic element without any texture and pattern. Here in the right panel we can see the different types of maps and what they are used for. Starting from the texture, we can import an images file by clicking this button. So from these new windows, I can choose the images that represent my material. Now the software is asking me if I want to mix the image's color in order to update the general color of my object. Now by clicking on this button, I can see a first preview of my material. And to complete the basic aspect of my material, I can assign an hatch pattern by choosing one from the beam object library. For example, under this masonry folder, I will choose this one. But now, let's see the other maps that define my material. The specular map is a black and white map in which the darkest areas present low reflectivity, while the clearest areas represent the most bright and reflective parts. So the more they tend to white, the more reflective they will be. Again, let's click in this button in order to insert our map file. So select the file and click open. Then we have the normal map, which is a color map of blue and purple, and its purpose is to improve the detail of the material, giving a much detailed aspect in its 3D geometry, and also it allows us to observe depressions and surfaces like holes, cracks and scratches. In this type of map, the darker areas are represented as grooves in the material, and the lighter areas like ridges. So let's select our file by clicking this button, select the bluish images and click open. Here we have the height map, also called the displacement map, which is a black and white map used to make the program understand where the rigid areas are, and that are the light areas, while the dark parts indicate the lowest area. This map, unlike the previous one, it operates directly on the object geometry, since each pixel on the map also has the height information. So again open this window, select the map, and click apply. For each of the previous map, we can also define the intensity by changing this percentage value. Now let's update the preview, so we can see if any difference is applied to the material. 
we can also check all this material will appear in the real-time rendering. So by clicking this tab, we can have a preview of the material and we can also continue to edit from the right panel. So for example, we can change the base color, then we can change the dimension for the texture map. For example, my map can be 80 cm for 80 cm. We can change the rotation angle, for example, having 30 degrees. And we can also mix the texture map with the basic color we chose before. Then from here we can change the properties of the specular map, for example by changing the intensity of the map, but also the intensity of the color reflection. From this box we can edit the 3D effects. So we can edit the properties of the normal map, or the intensity, by having for example 100%, but we can also invert the elevation effect. Then from the 8 map we can edit the elevation of some areas of the material. Now let's come back to the main tab and apply all the modification we did. Here we can make other modification available for the static rendering. But let's confirm this material and create a new one. As before, right click on the tab and select add element. First of all we will insert a texture map, again click on this button and select the map from this window. And for this example I will choose this texture. So by updating the preview we can see we have some part of the material made of bricks and between the bricks we have some white part. And now let's suppose we want to create all instead of the white part. Come back to the effect tab and let's import a new map from here. This time from the window I will select an alpha mask. And this is the result in the real-time rendering preview. Also for this material we want to apply the other map so for example I will select the specular map and also the normal map. And again from the real time we can see the completed material. Now let's move on to the next element in our general menu. In this section we can create a material layer element. By opening the general section you can see there are many folders already present with hundreds of material layer compositions defined by all their physics characteristics. But let's suppose we want to create a new one. So as seen before we need to create a new folder and then insert a new element inside. We can assign a name and a description but also a category like for example plaster, generic or maybe an insulated element. And of course we need to know and insert all the physics characteristics. We can also select an image or define a color that represents our material, for example this brown, and eventually we can apply a pattern by selecting one from the library. So the next step is to use our material in order to make a material layer composition. So let's insert a new folder under the vertical category and insert our new element. Now we need to access our editor by clicking this button. From this window we can create and add new layers just by clicking this arrow. So for our internal side we can select as a first layer this kind of plaster. Of course now we need to change the thickness of this layer, for example from 300 to 20 mm. Now we can insert a new layer, for example by choosing this element from the object library which is 80 mm. As you can see, while we are inserting new layers, we already have here a legend with all the materials. And if needed, we can also edit an already inserted element. For example, for this layer, I want to change the material and using a rubble layer. Now let's insert a new layer, and in this case we can use maybe bricks. And for example, we can select this from the library. And then, to complete our material layer composition, we probably want to add another layer of external plaster. Now we have all the materials with their physics characteristics, and we can close the editor by clicking the finish button. Now in this window we can see a new box, which shows us how this material layer composition is represented in the sectioned part of our project. Of course we can edit this representation from the properties panel. From this box we can change the color, the thickness and the style of the lines. 
from this box we can change the color of the filling for example from gray to red and of course we can apply a pattern again by choosing one from the library and as seen before we can also edit some properties of this pattern now in the upper part we can assign a new name but also an extensive description we can see the total thickness of our material layer composition and here we have the general physics characteristics but we can also check the characteristics of each layer by selecting it from this box. Speaking of physics characteristics, we can also use this function that allows us to visualize the graphic of temperatures and pressures. While coming back to the previous window, we can choose to publish our material layer composition in the online beam object library, but also in some social networks. Now let's confirm with this button and our material layer composition will be available from our projects. 